Let's say that the U.S. government and the U.S. Central Bank, the Fed, are unhappy about the fluctuations in the value of the U.S. dollar. 100 yen per dollar is simply too harmful for the U.S. economy. Instead, the U.S. government wishes to maintain a stable exchange rate at a range between 80 yen and 70 yen. In other words, the U.S. government wishes to place a price ceiling on the value of the dollar at 80 yen and a price floor on the value of the dollar dollar at 70 yen. This is called a managed exchange rate system. Next we're going to see what would happen if the market equilibrium exchange rate of the US dollar were to increase above 80 yen per dollar or fall below 80 yen per dollar. And we'll examine ways that the US central bank can maintain its managed exchange rate in the range between 70 yen per dollar and 80 yen per dollar. For this next question, let's assume that market forces put upward pressure on the demand for dollars in Japan and push the equilibrium exchange rate up to 90 yen per dollar. This could be shown as an increase in the demand for US dollars in Japan to a level greater than the desired equilibrium interest rate of 80 yen per dollar. If demand for dollars increases to a level that under free market conditions would cause the exchange rate to rise to 90, then the US government or central bank must now intervene in the foreign exchange market to devalue its currency back to an equilibrium level of at the most 80 yen per dollar. In order to keep the exchange rate within the desired range, the US central bank has a few options. One thing it can do is reduce interest rates in the United States. A decrease in interest rates should bring demand back down to a level that meets the desired objective of an exchange rate of only 80 yen per dollar. Another option would be for the US central bank to buy large quantities of Japanese yen. This would increase the demand for yen and increase the supply of dollars which again would push the value of the currency back to a desired level. So an, an intervention involving an increase in the supply of US dollars on foreign exchange markets could also bring the exchange rate back down to the desired level. Thirdly, the US government could impose exchange controls. An exchange control refers to a policy that reduces the total amount of foreign investment in the United States and thereby reduces the demand for US dollars on foreign exchange markets. Such a control might limit the quantity of US government bonds that a Japanese investor can buy. Uh, it might otherwise limit the amount of savings among Japanese investors in the United States. Any of these limitations which would bring down demand and reduce the exchange rate back to a desirable level within the range. If market forces put upward pressure on the value of the US currency, the Central Bank of the United States or the government can impose any of the, the three policies outlined here. Reduce interest rates would re which would reduce demand for US dollars on the foreign exchange market. Buy large quantities of Japanese yen which would increase the supply of dollars and put downward pressure on the exchange rate. Or implement, implement exchange controls which would reduce the demand for US dollars in the United States and thereby bring down the exchange rate. Finally, let's assume that market forces, instead of putting upward pressure on the value of the dollar, put downward pressure on the value of the dollar and push the equilibrium exchange rate to 60 yen per dollar, which is below the desired minimum value of the dollar of 70 yen. As we can see here, a decrease in the demand for dollars in Japan could cause a depreciation of the dollar to an undesirably low exchange rate. Now, what could the U.S. government or central bank do to restore an equilibrium exchange rate within the desired range of 70 yen per dollar to 80 yen per dollar? Quite the opposite of what we saw when the dollar appreciated above the desired range, the opposite policy could be implemented in the United States. Now, an increase in U.S. interest rates could could be implemented by the central bank, which would cause a demand for dollars to increase and restore an equilibrium exchange rate within the range desired. In addition, a large sale of Japanese yen by the US Central Bank, a sale of Japanese yen by the Central Bank could push down the value of the Japanese yen and the US could buy up some of its own currency, increasing the demand for dollars on foreign exchange markets and moving us back to an equilibrium exchange rate between 70 and 80. 
Finally, the U.S. government could implement exchange controls in the opposite direction, limiting the demand among U.S. investors for Japanese assets. This thereby would reduce the outflow of U.S. dollars from the United States and reduce the supply of U.S. dollars in Japan, causing the U.S. dollar to appreciate back to a level within the range desired. So let's briefly review what we've gone over today. We've seen how a change in relative interest rates due to a central bank policy can lead to an appreciation or a depreciation of a nation's currency. We've also gone over speculation and decided how speculation of an increase in the value of a currency can lead to a current appreciation of the currency due to increased demand for that currency. Finally, we've talked about how foreign exchange controls, manipulation of interest rates, and purchases of foreign currencies by a nation's central bank can lead to a revaluation or a devaluation of a nation's currency to keep it within a range of desired exchange rates in order to maintain several macroeconomic objectives, including stable net exports. Thanks for watching today's video lecture. Be sure to download the PDF from the blog on which you can practice the different exercises we've gone over today.